It's Friday, November 29th, the day after Thanksgiving, AKA Black Friday. When everyone's out shopping, trying to get those deals and the day that I try to avoid shopping because I just don't want to deal with that crap anymore. So I came out to the range because I have the day off from work. Uh, we have all four days off for our holiday break for Thanksgiving. And I figured it'd be a quiet range day because of the weather conditions. I figured everyone would be scared off from all the rains that we had in the past two days in Southern California. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty heavy rains. But surprisingly enough, it didn't flood out the creek and it's like, it's deeper than usual, but it's not bad. Um, and most, uh, any decently clearanced vehicle can make it. And as you can see behind me, it did snow. Uh, it did snow in the mountain areas of Southern California. And I know I heard Big Bear got some pretty good snow, so ski season should start up pretty quickly. Um, but all things considering, I think people got scared off and so they're not gonna come out to the range. So I figured it'd be pretty quiet today. Um, and I'm gonna jinx myself by saying this, but it's not as windy and not as cold as I thought it would be. It's about 40 degrees, 39 degrees on the Kestrel, but for some reason it doesn't feel 40 degrees. Um, but I, from what I understand, the wind's supposed to pick up today, so. But the reason why I came out, other than that it's my day off, I needed to come to the Rimfire Range to set some stuff up. Uh, the reason being is we have some new events happening here at the West End Gun Club, and I'll address those after I get set up with all my gear. What I'm about to do this morning uh, before I start shooting is I'm gonna go out and mark some distances on the rimfire range, like 65, 75, 85, 95, 100 yards or whatever with these whisker, uh, you call them these uh, whisker markers or whatever, or survey whiskers, um, various colors. The reason why I'm doing this is because we now have approval to hold NRL 22 matches on a monthly basis here at the, West, at the West End Gun Club. So we've had NRL 22 matches here before but it was held in concert with the PBR or the Precision Bolt Rifle Discipline here at West End Gun Club. And they have a match on the third Sundays of every month. And it's on centerfire only, right? But every, like maybe twice a year, they'll hold the NRL 22 match. And it's very infrequent. And so I think there was a desire um, by a few people, including myself, to want to shoot NRL 22 matches here at the range. And so it's all a question of getting approval from the gun club to hold another event. And so what I wrote, wrote a proposal a couple months ago, back in October, well, it's still November. So last month I wrote a proposal presented to the board and then they asked it to be presented at the actual club meeting. And then the PBR director reached out to me and said, hey, you know what, we can hold this, you know, as part of the PBR, but as a second match or whatever. And so I, we did that and then they approved it. And so we're gonna hold NRL 22 matches here at the West End Gun Club on the Rimfire Range uh, the fourth Sunday of every month. So we're gonna try to start in December and hopefully it'll go well. But um, the first match should be uh, December 22nd. So that's why I'm out here. I'm gonna go ahead and start pre-marking some distances just for even reference too. When I'm out here shooting, it's sometimes I just, Every time I come out here to shoot and I want to set up my steel, I have to prop up some stuff on the firing line so I can laze it while I'm out there and then go ahead and set up my target. So I figure it might be nice just to mark them off on a semi-permanent basis to just have those markers out there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while we have time today. I didn't record a montage of me setting up all those little survey markers out there, but rest assured I set them out there. Um, I need to go take notes on what colors I use for each distance. Um, but yeah, that took me a good while to set all that up and then I was moving slow getting all my rest of my gear on the line but um set up a paper target out there at 50 we're gonna go ahead and shoot some 50 right now curious to see how my the ammo performs right now at 38 degrees it's 38.2 according to the Kestrel uh, we'll see how the Center X holds up 
and we'll see if the velocities drop any. Just curious. Um, granted, my ammo was sitting in a car, but or the vehicle rather. So it may or may not be an accurate test, but we'll. Yeah, it's relatively cold. I'll take some boxes out here. And uh, I did make up this mount. So I have this uh, GoPro mount that I made. Basically, it's uh, I just took, I got one of these Amazon purchase made in China, who knows, random brand Arca clamp. It's basically a clone of a really right stuff clamp. I have one, a, an actual really right stuff clamp uh, that was sitting on my shelf that I didn't use, but for some reason I just wanted to use something generic for this. Um, but it looks, this looks exactly like it. I got it from Amazon. I think it's called Newer something, Newer, whatever. It's an Arca clamp. I went to the local metal supply shop in Riverside, got me a piece of aluminum, just a two inch, two inches? I think it's two inch uh, wide or deep aluminum. It's like a quarter inch, maybe a quarter inch thick or something, five sixteenths inch thick aluminum. And then I just cut it down to five inches in length so that I threaded the clamp on here, put a little set screw there so it doesn't rotate, and then um, put an adhesive GoPro mount on there so I can run the GoPro on the rifle. But uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool just to have the GoPro on here um, because I have one on my AR when I use, because I have a key mod mount for that one, and I couldn't find a good, a good mount for the GoPro on well, pick rail or whatever. I think everything's like some random, uh, what do you call that, 3D printed, garbage so i just said you know what let me just come up with my own plate so i made a plate for arca since i've been using arca for the bolt rifle and i said you know what those adhesive mounts actually stick pretty well so uh we'll just put an adhesive mount on a aluminum plate threaded to arca an arca clamp we'll see how that goes but basically i don't know if you can see it uh, from that distance with that wide angle lens but i can just put it on either side left or right and then um because the uh, two-way mount or the adhesive mount is can go both ways it doesn't really matter uh what direction because it's not keyed but it's dropping the mount right there that's it so i can run the gopro and then kind of just have a just a close-up view of operating the bolt or whatever just something something for different camera angles when you're shooting and stuff and then if you're like shooting and uh you know an action match it's kind of cool just running around with it but hey just little things right the plate i think it cost me three dollars they sold to me for three dollars plus two sets or two screws i needed so that was a pretty good deal three dollars for the uh i think it was a six inch no eight inch strip they're pre-cut i think it's called k and h metal supplies in riverside k and something metal supply they're only open on weekdays plus saturdays like six to noon and they're closed on sundays Five shot ag. It's, oh, it's it's a good ten feet per second slower than normal. So ten ninety. I think this lot that I'm shooting that I got from Bruno's, which is actually a really good lot, in my gun. It's pushing eleven hundred, eleven hundred feet per second on a normal day, like seventy five, eighty degrees ambient. So it's ten feet per second slower. But I heard a lot of guys saying in colder weather, like that polar biathlon really makes a difference. But I don't know. How often do we shoot in cold weather in Southern California, right? So the big news uh, in this range vlog is the fact that we're going to be holding those NRL 22 matches here at Western Gun Club. So a lot of people, I, I saw some on social media and stuff, people looking for NRL 22 in SoCal. The closest thing is in Ridgecrest, right? Which is a, for Inland Empire, Riverside, it's like two and a half hour drive for me. And I didn't want to make that drive to Ridgecrest to shoot a 22 match. Uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be fun to shoot 22s, but at the same time, two and a half hours, you know, and I have to get there probably at seven, I think, was when they do start check-ins and they start right at eight or 7.30 or something. I don't know, but 
I'd have to leave the house like 5.30, 5 o'clock. And back when I was shooting service rifle high power, I was used to that, right? I'd wake up, at, I'd get out of the house at 5 to get to Camp Pendleton at 6. Uh, even though we never started that early, I wanted to get out there to the range ASAP. But yeah, I used to be a hardcore competitor. So 22, right? NRL 22, as much as I want to shoot it, I'm not a hardcore competitor. Uh, still just want to have fun with it. So two and a half hours seems just too much of a drag each way. So that that is why um, a lot of people also have the same complaints, right? And like the SoCal Precision Club, is, it's called SoCal Precision Rifle Team, which is, uh, it's kind of a, just a group of guys. Um, a lot of them shoot here at West End, but they shoot a lot of long range matches and precision rifle matches, PRS, NRL stuff all around the country. But they're the group that's on NRL 22. So if you go to NRL22.com and you look for clubs, they're listed there. But it's a club, but there's no matches, right? It's kind of weird. People understand that. And so the way NRL 22 works is you register your club, not necessarily your range. If you're a club, because NRL 22, all it requires is you to have a place to shoot 100-yard max distance of fire with these the official steel plates that they have. You get them from JC Steel Targets, which is what I have. Um, and in just a group of guys, you call yourself a club or an organization and you can shoot anywhere if you want. You can shoot on BLM land. It doesn't really matter. And then that's how you kind of register your organization with NRL 22. And so SoCal Precision Rifle Team is registered with NRL 22, but it's not a range, right? It's just a club or an organization that holds NRL, it's supposed to be holding NRL 22 matches. But again, as I mentioned, they're part of the PBR here at Weston Gun Club, that whole precision bolt rifle discipline. And so since they already have their center fire matches, they can't just have rim fire matches on that same day. It just the logistics are terrible. So that's why I ended up coming in and saying, hey, you know what, we should just get this going. And I propose that we get it going here. And then they finally accepted it or they accepted it in the first round. So it's good because I know there's demand for it. And I don't know. I know there's demand. I don't know how very popular it will be, like how packed it will be every month. But I anticipate we should be able to get 20 shooters. I, I can't imagine we can't, um, but once the word gets out, I'm, I'm sure next month when we hold the first match, it might be kind of lower attendance, but as long as we get, you know, six to 10 guys, I'd be, or six to 10 shooters, doesn't have to be guys, but six to 10 shooters, um, I'll be satisfied with that. And then once it spreads that we actually have these matches now on a regular basis, it'll be good uh, for people interested in NRL 22. So the average is still holding 1086, 26 rounds aggregate. So I think that's a pretty good indicator of how this is performing. So we're looking at still rough 38 degrees, 38.5 degrees. And we're looking at a 15 feet per second roughly drop. I give, given a 40 degree drop in weather or temperature, if you want to estimate that. So. Very interesting numbers to have. I think I have some SK Biathlon, which is technically like their cold weather version. I'm gonna try that right now. I think I have it. I think I, do I have it? Yeah, I think I have some in the Jeep. Let me go grab it. Maybe if I still, I'll check a look in the ammo can. Sadly, I did not bring the SK Biathlon with me. Um, it's not in this ammo can. I think it's probably inside my ammo cabinet. Um, it is what it is, but I'm going to try to shoot some long range since it'd be also interesting to see how this performs in the colder weather. And it is getting colder right now, uh, at least feeling it. The longer I sit out here, the more it weighs on me. And I still haven't heard any gunshots other than my own. So... Not sure if anyone's gonna show up today. Maybe they'll wait till the sun tries to peak out, but I don't anticipate the sun's coming out till, if any time, late afternoon. Oh, I threw that round. 
Hey, first shot, other than my own. People are actually starting to show up at the range. Average 1088, 20 rounds. So I'm gonna just shoot long range match since I still wanna shoot up some of it. And it shoots well enough in this gun. So I need 0 0.77, 1, 1, 1, 5. So about 0 0.8, 1, 1, shoot, what do I? What am I shooting at? 75, 95, and 100. So 0 0.8, 1, 6, 1, 8. 0 0.8, 1, 6, 1, 8. I try to remember that. About to pack it in for the day but uh, just to show you the paper targets that I shot at the start of the morning uh, this is the first round clean cold bore then a second round and I started centering them all up center X center X center X center X center X center X and then SK long range match this is the transition between the two ammo and then SK long range match I don't know what I was doing here a little bit up and down but the standard fair stuff uh, this is kind of what I'm looking usually to get out of the Voodoo with, at 50 yards, as long as I hold it straight. Um, but yeah, 
standard fare groups with Voodoo. I'm packed up, I'm about to get out of the range. Took care of what I was trying to take care of today as far as marking all the various distances here at the Rimfire Range. Took some notes um, so I can figure out how to best place all the stages for the NRL 22 course of fire. Since the Rimfire Range is very limited in space, I need to figure out the best way to set up all the stages with respect to the fire on the firing points versus the target area and the impact area. And I'll see what I can come up with and then I still need to work on some logistical stuff, targetry equipment, props, paperwork. Registration form's already been staged. It's on practicescore.com. Um, I'll link to that registration form in the video description just so you can, if you're in the SoCal area and you want to shoot it, you can register. Um, but it's already been communicated out on the club website, and I think uh, we'll throw it on Facebook in a couple areas, and I'll probably make a Facebook event. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's the first time I'm going to run a match. I've called the firing line before as far as uh, competitions, like calling the uh, stage of fire or the course of fire at high power matches and run a line, but I've not run a full-on match. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, it's going to be a learning experience. So anyway, that's it for today, uh, November 29th, Friday here at the Weston Gun Club. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next vlog.